Welcome back. Today we are going to discuss about circuit breaker pattern which is a very interesting design pattern. This is more than a design pattern, this is very close to sustainable pattern. In other words, uh, it will help you to uh, keep your service without dying or uh, keep uh, good health on your service, in other words, fail fast. Why this is important? Because in a distributed system, we have no idea how other services would break. So, each service is responsible to stay alive. In other way, you, as a developer, you are responsible to keep your service alive. So, this is not only applicable for microservices, but in the microservices world, this is very critical because we have multiple services which behave in a different way, which maintain by different team. So, it is very critical, but this is common across the board. So, that is why I decide to, decided to talk about microservice, um, talk about this um, circuit breaker pattern. Before go there, I have one request from you. Uh, create a content for this type of channel, I have to uh, put a lot of time and effort on this. So, to get maximum out of this, you can help me. How you can do that? This doesn't cost you anything. So, there is a subscribe button down of this video, so you can go ahead and click that. It doesn't cost you anything, right? So, but it will help YouTube to uh, index this channel among other channels. So, if you feel this video is interesting, so you can help other people to find these videos. How you can do that? Just go ahead and subscribe to this channel. So in that way, Google uh, will uh, take care of index this channel and index this content and share across the globe. So I will create the content. You help me uh, to share those uh, through the people who are looking for this type of content by subscribing to this channel right okay let's go to circuit breaker pattern um, if you go around your home you can find a circuit breaker right so if your house is uh, powered by electricity then definitely you should have a circuit breaker what that does uh, you get the power from the main grid but it comes through a circuit breaker if uh, your main grid it behave in abnormal way or if a lightning strike cause additional power on the power grid, so it will break the circuit breaker. Circuit breaker will go off. In that way, uh, your internal circuit or your internal wiring of your home will be protected, right? So that is the circuit breaker does. This is more or less very much equal to this design pattern. Okay, so now, if we take uh, our previous example, we have four different services, right? Uh, you don't need that video uh, in order to understand this video, but it would be helpful if you're going through this scatter gather or uh, that aggregator pattern, right? Um, when you have multiple services, right? So there is a very much possibility those services call for multiple backends, right? and you create a pattern like aggregator to call those services. When we talk about availability, we usually say services are 99.999 uptime is guaranteed. So that means it's a 59, right? Um, if you do simple math, you will understand this. So let's take, uh, you have 8,760 hours per year, right? So if you multiply this amount by uh, 60, you get minutes per year, right? So now multiply this by this remain percentage, in other words, uh, 0 0.99999 and uh, subtract that from the original value. So you will get some around 315.36, right? So that equal to 5 minute uh, downtime per year. That's fine, but uh, architecture like a microservices, you have a multiple. In a monolithic system, that would be fine. But when you take a, a high, high number of services, let's say you have a hundred number of services, so this will cause to eight hour downtime per year. That may not acceptable. If you do the real maths, that may not acceptable. 
So, that is why we need to uh, pay our attention in order to, in to protect our services. Okay. Let us see what are the causes to break the service. If you take uh, your service, let us say uh, you have uh, 5 different microservices or 5 different services and you have web server to call this. Let us say you implemented aggregator pattern, right? Uh, maybe a chain pattern, maybe a parallel pattern, does not matter. Some, somehow you implemented it, it does not matter. So now uh, you have 5 services, now you get the request, right? That means server allocate one thread to call that backend, call that service. Now service is little delayed, so this thread is waiting, right? Or oh, until timeout. And the waiting one thread waiting is a fine, but if the service is high demand service, if it get more and more and more requests, this all uh, one by one thread in the thread pool get wait, right? So let's say you have a hundred threads maybe now 98 threads are occupied. Other threads, maybe other two threads are maybe consumed for other services. So all threads are occupied or blocked. So now what happened? Now the remaining threads which comes to your service will be blocked or queued, right? So let us say now uh, other 50 threads are in a queue. Somehow this uh, failed service recovered back, but still web server is trying to process all those uh, requests which in, in the queue. As a result, what happened is uh, your service web server will never recover. Why web server or your uh, proxy or whatever will never recover? Why? Because uh, when it uh, process the queue, more and more and more requests comes, right? Uh, this type of scenario will kill your service. Let us say you have a scenario A service called B, B service called C, C service called D, right? So, meantime you have X, Y, Z other services. If the D services fail to respond on time, then uh, C service is waiting. C service waiting means B service is waiting, B service waiting means A service is waiting. So, this can call cascade failure, right? So, uh, here is the point. No matter how, if you fail, right, your service will go offline, which is not acceptable. Now, we need to find a way to keep this uh, up and running. Let us take the same scenario. We have a uh, four backend services, you have a proxy or um, some pattern which call those services. If that says, uh, let us say you have defined threshold, okay? service A should respond within 200 millisecond. Right? If um, how the circuit, circuit breaker pattern works, if a uh, number of requests, let us say 75% uh, of requests is reaching the upper threshold, right? That means uh, between 150 to 200, now service is this is uh, failing slowly. Okay? So, if number of occurrences which exceed the 200 millisecond, which is um, the maximum threshold you gave for the service, if exceeding number of time, you can configure this. So, now this proxy understand, hey, this service is uh, not responding anymore. What it does is next request which come to access service A will uh, fail back. That means it break the connection between your proxy and the service A. Right? So now your proxy will not go to service A. That means it will not wait. Why this is important? You may think, okay, uh, what big deal? Right? You can directly go to that service and see if it is failing go back why you need to implement something in between here's the point let's say you have uh, 30 second timeout okay so if the each request is trying to hit the service a without considering it's failing the all the requests which come from the consumer is waiting 30 second end of this 30 seconds timeout right they, those will fail out that is fine but 
uh, during that 30 seconds time the remaining requests also which come to consume service A will be trying to reach service A and those are also go and waiting queue. So now the what circuit breaker pattern does is uh, if it is failing a more than given threshold so it will not try to hit the service A at all it will uh, fail back to consumer saying service A is not available. Now how it uh, how is going to connect back? What it does is in a background it send a ping request or maybe a default request to service A time to time right. So, when this uh, communication time when this response time is come back to the normal threshold it will uh, turn on this circuit again. So, that means the remain the next request which comes to um, consume service A will directly go hit to the service A. So, in that way uh, what we are expecting is to like there is no queue now right why during that failure time all the requests which comes to go uh, consume the service A we send back with the error message. So, now there is no queue when the service back up uh, it is going to consume for the uh, open for the new traffic. So, now we now you can come up a uh, uh, argument saying okay so that mean we are going to um, fail certain back end response cer certain consumer request okay so what what else we can do if we let them to go to service a the whole request whole system will fail right why because as uh, as we explained there will be a huge queue create behind the service and even though the service comes up those queues will go to uh, consume the service a and eventually it will fail but with this approach what we can do is ok it will fail for certain time right? yes certain request will say uh, service A is not available, but as soon as it is come back the remaining request will be served. Um, that is the principle behind this uh, design pattern alright. So, uh, when you implement this type of design pattern uh, you can define ok. Uh, 100 to 100 and between 0 and 100 milliseconds it is the expected um, delays interval and between 100 milliseconds and 200 milliseconds it is a kind of a, a risky zone and if you go 200 milliseconds if you go beyond 200 milliseconds you are going to cut off this service right. So, with that if you uh, create a monitoring dashboard we can see how many times it go in between 100 and 200 and based on that you can make certain decisions. So, ground rule you can implement it whatever the way you want, but uh, you may do not need to this threshold level you may say ok if my services go uh, maybe 90 percent of traffic is going um, good and 10 percent traffic of if, if the 10 percent of uh, traffic is taking beyond 200 milliseconds to execute. So, you may be trying to uh, disconnect the service that is up to you ok. So, that is about um, circuit breaker pattern. Now, I know your question ok this guy can tell all those things, but how we can do this how we can implement this keep in mind do not try to reinvent the wheel. If you are trying to reinvent the wheel you will not going to do this because this to create this type of logics and everything uh, it will be really hard. So, there are multiple ways you can implement this, but uh, no, uh, moreover you do not have to do this right you do not have to implement this your own. So, uh, after explaining this type of few um, concept I have uh, two other uh, one or two videos to, to, to explain this type of fault tolerance and other design patterns. After that I will introduce few libraries and I will explain you how you can uh, use those libraries and implement this type of patterns without wasting your time ok. So, to get those notification get those information about those videos just go ahead and subscribe if you like this just click this thumb up thumbs up. So, it will help to uh, this channel to grow ok then we will see you in the next video.